the first attitude that I have noticed among many, many Muslims, uh, and before I noticed it in anyone else, it was actually an attitude that I had myself. So I know that it exists because it's personal. Is that the Qur'an is not relevant. That the Qur'an is not talking about my life. It's talking about something that happened a long time ago. The people that I know that talk about the Qur'an look like they belong 500 years ago. They don't look like modern people. Uh, these people when they speak, they speak in a way that nobody else speaks. My friends don't talk like this. My colleagues at work don't talk like this. My, my professors at school don't talk like this. As soon as, and as a matter of fact, you could be friends with a khatib. And when you're talking to them, they talk to you perfectly normally. But as soon as they get up on the mimbar, they talk differently. They talk like there's, they belong in a different time. And it becomes almost disconnected from you. So the first impression I had of religious conversation, Qur'an, Sunnah, the whole bit, the whole thing, was that this does not belong in this time. This is some old thing. And this is for people that are old-minded. They're not, you cannot have this religion and live in modern times. You cannot combine those two things. It's impossible. That's number one. And as a matter of fact, even in so many lectures that I heard, all they talked about was how bad these times are and how good the old times used to be. That's all they talk about. Is these times are very bad and old times were very, very good. And so I say to myself, well, old times are over. So I guess it's bad now, so what's the point? <laughs> That's the first problem. The second problem I noticed, again something I noticed in myself, and then I noticed it in now millions of other people, is that this religion and this book is extremely strict, and it's harsh, and it's difficult, and it has rules that are not easy. The rules of this book, the guidelines of this book, that it tells you to do some things that you're not supposed to do, or it, it forbids you from some things, or it commands you to other things. But its rules are too many, and too heavy, and too difficult, and basically impractical. You can't do it. You just can't do it. If you have to do it, you have to be a very extreme person. You cannot be a normal, happy person and do these rules. As a matter of fact, the more religious you get, the more depressed you get, and the more angry you get, and the more angry you look. So all the religious people I know are really angry people. So I don't want to be like that, so that must be because of this religion. This religion is harsh, so it makes people harsh. It makes people difficult. It makes people very angry. As a matter of fact, in my own life, before I turned to the deen of Allah, I was born a Muslim, but you know, you know how it is. If I saw a guy with a beard, I ran the other way. I do not want to be around those guys, because they keep telling me how I'm going to hell. Or they're just going to tell me to do something, like go make salat. Or, hey brother, why do you have this? Why, do you, why are you dressed like that? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you... Stop. I don't want to talk to you. Just leave me alone. Let me eat pizza. You know? You're, you're sitting there relaxing, eating your pizza. The guy with the beard walks into the restaurant. You're like, oh God. Ah, I was enjoying my meal. This guy had to come in here, you know. So the, the religion is harsh and people that follow the religion are also harsh. That was the second attitude. The third attitude was that every time I hear, or at least most of the times when I heard people talk about the deen of Allah, they did not tell me why I should be Muslim. They did not tell me why I should be Muslim. They only told me that I should be Muslim. Here's what you should do. And if I said, why should I do it? They said, because you're going to burn in hell if you don't do it. Why should I believe I shall burn in hell? Don't question why you should believe it will burn in hell. You're a kafir if you question. You have doubts? You don't have iman? <coughs> and if you go to the, the person who gave you that lecture and you say to them, so how do we know, how do we know for sure that this is the right religion? How do we know? I mean, there's so many religions in the world. How do we know that we have the right religion? The shaykh will tell you, and he told me, you son, you need to make wudu, then you make, need to make two rak'ah, because you're getting muswasa from shaitan. After I make wudu, and I make two rak'ah, I still have the same question. 
why are we following this religion? Every time I ask that question, people say, Astaghfirullah al azim how can you ask that question? You're not supposed to ask that question. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa Do your parents know about this? Akhil Kareem, sit down, sit down. Let me do some ruqya on you. <laughs> but then after the ruqya is done, I still have the same question. So you know what I started thinking? And millions of young people around the world started thinking? These people don't have an answer to that question. These people, number one, they want you to live like you live that this... They don't want you to live in 2015, they want you to live in 1275. <laughs> They want you to live in the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. That was number one. It's irrelevant for this time. Number two, they're extremely harsh. And number three, they don't want to answer my questions. They think my questions are evil. These three reasons are enough, more than enough, for someone to want nothing to do with Islam. If you have these three concerns, and you want nothing to do with Islam, <coughs> I appreciate that, I understand. It's logical. And I can tell you, with a good degree of confidence, I have not been to any country in the world, Muslim or non-Muslim, where there are not people who think exactly like this. For all the people who come and sit in a lecture, there are hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people, Muslim and non-Muslim, who have this problem. They have this problem. And so this is what I noticed for so long. And I stayed away from the Qur'an for so long in my life, for one reason. It doesn't have to do with my time. It's harsh. It's not gonna answer my questions. How are my questions? I have questions. I went to college in New York City. I took a philosophy class. And in philosophy class, and in psychology class, and in anthropology class, when, I've, when I'm studying Freud, when I'm studying you know, evolution, when I'm studying you know, modern European philosophy, how is a book 1400 years ago going to answer my questions? Come on, seriously? It's not gonna have answers to my questions. You know? So I have no reason to go to this book. But by the gift of Allah, for no other reason, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ When I did stumble upon the book of Allah, when I did start to decide to try to understand the book of Allah, and I was fortunate enough to find some incredible, incredible teachers, I realized all three of those things were untrue. The book is incredibly relevant. The book has answers to my questions and my problems, and my personal problems today. Forget about society's problems and the world's problems. That's, second, that's stage two and stage three. I'm talking stage one, my personal problems, it has answers. The second issue was it's harsh. The more I studied the book, I realized people are harsh, but the book is not harsh. <coughs> Allah sent the book as a rahmah, but we don't have rahmah. So when we talk about the book, we talk about the book, but we take out the rahmah. <laughs> That's what we do. Allah's book doesn't do that, we do that. Okay, we're intolerant. We're intolerant. And well, I'll talk about that a little bit later, some more. And then the third problem was that, it, you know, people don't want to answer my questions. I have questions and they say, Astaghfirullah, this is from shaitan. But the Qur'an says, Hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen. The Qur'an is inviting people to ask questions and bring their criticisms. Which religion in the world says, please, criticize? No other religion other than Islam. Please, we would invite you to question and criticize this book. I'm reading this and I'm saying, how can a book do that? I thought this book is supposed to tell me, just believe. And if you don't believe, you will burn. But this book says, no, think for yourself. No other religion tells you to think. Actually, every other religion tells you, stop thinking and just believe. Stop thinking and just believe. And this book says, you cannot stop thinking. You have to think, and if you think, only then you will believe. There's no other religion like that. We keep talking about doing da'wah to non-Muslims. I am here to tell you, the ummah itself is disconnected from the Qur'an. And actually, a lot of times, 
when the people are hearing about the Qur'an, they are hearing a message that is harsh, that is irrelevant, and that does not answer their questions, even though the Qur'an answers the questions, the person presenting it doesn't present it that way. And so we are misrepresenting, or under, no, let's not say misrepresenting, we are under-representing the Book of Allah. We are under-representing the Book of Allah. That is the problem that I see before me. That's the challenge of our time. That to me is the biggest challenge of our time. Things are said about the ayat of Allah. The easy, it's easy to quote an ayah of Qur'an. Very easy. It's not difficult. And it's also extremely easy to misuse an ayah of the Qur'an. It's very easy. And people do it. And you know what? Sometimes people misuse the ayat of Qur'an and innocent people die. This Qur'an, if you misuse it, it will not just create fasad on the earth. It will create, you know, وَيَسْ فِي The angels had a concern. It'll spill blood. The Qur'an can be used or misused to spill blood. And it's happening. The Qur'an can be misused to push people away from Islam. It's happening. It's happening in our time. People are reciting, the people that are talking about Qur'an, they're talking about it in a way that even the Muslim says, I don't want Islam anymore. I want to walk away from it. This is the tragedy of our time. Now, that was the tragedy part. I'm going to stop talking about the tragedy now. You heard enough about the tragedy. Now I'm going to start over. I'm going to talk to you about an ayah of the Qur'an. Wallahu anzala minas sama'i